Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of NASCAR Underdogs, Rick Mast. Richard Kenneth Mast, born March 4th, 1957, is a former NASCAR Cup Series and Xfinity Series driver. From 1982 through 2002, he began racing at the age of 16. He was able to do so due to the fact he traded a cow to, for his first race car. An Angus cow to be exact. Bast ran at the local level for 10 years before entering the then Bush series, now Xfinity series. Bast's first Xfinity series start came in the spring of 1982 at Richmond. He began driving a number 22 Pontiac that he owned. They attempted 13 races, qualifying for 11 of them. His best known start was 10th in the spring at South Boston. I say known start because, honestly, some of the records uh, for the first couple years, for like the mid-80s on back, is kind of touch and go on some of the races. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to give you, uh, as far as the starting positions, what I know. Um, now... His best finish was third in the spring at Richmond. Overall, they scored two top fives and four top tens. Even though Rick only started less than half the scheduled races, he still finished 18th, 18th in final points. For the 1983 Xfinity Series season, Mass returned to the, nine, to the number 22 A.G. Dillard Incorporated Pontiac, owned by Rick Mass himself. <clears throat> His best known start, I mean, was fifth in the spring at Martinsville. His best finish was fourth twice in the spring at Bristol and South Boston. Overall, he was able to score three top fives and seven top tens on his way to finishing 20th in final points. The team was plagued by DNFs, with their race ending with a DNF 11 out of 20 times. Then in 1984, Mask would change race teams Moving, moving the car over to the number 99, Nelson Building Supply Pontiac. Still driving for himself, so it's not really changing race team, just changing numbers. Once again, he only made 20 starts. His best start was 6th in the summer at Rougemont, and his best finish was 4th in the fall at Bristol. Overall, he was able to score... One top five and four top tens en route to a 14th in final points. Once again, the team was plagued by DNFs, with his race ending in DNFs 10 out of 20 times. So, 50% of the time. Now, for the first time, Rick Mast ran the full schedule in the Xfinity Series in 1985. Mast ran all 27 races for his Mast Racing Team. But they used three different numbers throughout the season, using a number two once, a number tw number 44 seven times, and a number 22 for all the remaining races. His best start was fourth twice in the fall at Charlotte and Martinsville, and his best finish was second three times in the spring at Bristol and Martinsville, then in the summer at Milwaukee. Overall, he scored five top fives and 15 top tens, all the way to finishing 7th in final points. Things continued to be reasonably consistent for Rick Mast in 1986. He once again returned to his own number 22 A.G. Dillard Incorporated Pontiac and Chevrolet. Because <clears throat> they ran both. Once again, full time. His best start was 3rd in the fall at Brugemont. And his best finish was 4th twice. In the spring at Rockingham and in the fall at Rougemont. Overall, he scored two top fives and 13 top tens on their way, his way to 11th in final points. Once again, the Mask Racing Team would take another step up in 1987, the NASCAR Xfinity Series season. Rick returned to his number 22 AG Dillard Incorporated Buick and Pontiac. His best start was first in the spring at Dover, and his best finish was first twice in the fall at Dover and Martinsville. 
Overall, they scored one pole, two wins, four top fives, nine top tens, and grew to 11th final points. This was his first pole, and this was his first career win in the Bush Series, Xfinity Series. It was the Bush Series back then, but we're going to call it Xfinity Series for any fans that, you know, so people don't get confused because it's called that today. So we're just going to go with that name for today. Now back, <clears throat> Master Racing Team was back after a very solid season in 1987. Or back in 1988 in the Xfinity Series. Back in the, the number 22, A.G. Diller, Buick. And Rick Mass, his best start was second. Twice in the fall at Rockingham, or at Regemont and Martinsville. And his best finish was first twice. In the spring at Nazareth and in the fall at Rougemont. Overall, Mast scored two wins, five top fives, and 13 top tens on their way to a solid eighth in final points. As a matter of fact, Rick spent every single week of the 88 season in the top ten of points. Another huge thing happened to Rick Mast in 1988. He made his NASCAR Cup Series debut in the fall at Bristol, finishing 28th. He was driving for Buddy Baker in the number 88 Red Baron Pizza Oldsmobile. Mast ended up making two starts for the team in 88. His best start was 22nd at Darlington. And his best finish was that 28th I just mentioned at Bristol. So for the 1989 NASCAR season, Rick Mast was once again back in his number 22, now sponsored by Raven Boats, Buick in the Xfinity Series. His best start was first twice in the summer at Myrtle Beach and in the fall at Martinsville. And his best finish was first twice in the spring at Nashville Fairgrounds and then in the summer at Dublin. Overall, they scored two poles, two wins, nine top fives, and 13 top tens on their way to finishing seventh in final points. Rick made 14 attempts qualifying for 13 races in the, Cup, in the NASCAR Cup Series. He was behind the wheel of the number 66 Win Dixie Chevrolet for Mach 1 Racing. His best start was 10th in the spring at Rockingham, and his best finish was 6th in their debut in the season opener in the Daytona 500. As a new decade came, the 1990s, Mast would run his final full time Xfinity Series season. Again, Mass was driving his own number 22 Raven Boats Buick. His best start was first in the fall at Martinsville, and his best finish was first three times in the fall at Bristol, Richmond, and Loudoun. Overall, they scored one pole, three wins, eight top fives, and ten top tens. Mass ended up finishing tenth in final points. In the NASCAR Cup Series, he made 14 starts for DK Ulrich. 10 starts in a number 2 Pontiac, and 4 starts in a number two, number 22 Pontiac. His best start was 8th, and his best finish was 12th in the spring, but it could be in the spring at Bristol. He also made 6 starts driving for Travis Carter in the number 98 Chevrolet. His best start was 7th, and his best finish was 7th, both coming in the fall at Phoenix. Overall, he scored one top 10 finish. The following season, in 1991, Rick only ran the Cup Series. He ran his first full-time season with the team that he would spend the most time with while he ran in his time in the Cup Series. Precision Products Racing, the number one school classic automobile. His best start was third in the spring at Dover and his best finish was 4th in the Daytona 500. Overall, they scored 1 top 5 and 3 top 10s, finishing 21st in final points. Mast once again returned to the Precision Products Racing Team, the number 1 school classic automobile full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series in 1991. Or 1992, actually. Uh, now, his best start was 1st in the fall at Atlanta. This was Rick's first pole, and it came in one of the most important races of all time, the Hooters 500 in 1992. 
the race where Alan Kowicki, uh, an owner driver, battled it out and won his first and only championship as well as Jeff Gordon. He made his first NASCAR Cup Series race, first start, and also Richard Petty made his final NASCAR Cup Series start. Now, his best finish was ninth in the fall at Martinsville, and overall, they scored one top ten. One pole and one top ten throughout the season, on their way to finishing 22nd in final points. Mast also returned to the NASCAR Xfinity Series for 11 starts. In a number zero Skull Classic Oldsmobile, this also driving for the Precision Products Racing Team. His best start was 7th in the spring in Atlanta. His best finish was 6th twice in the spring in Daytona and Richmond. That next season, in 1993, Rick would be behind the wheel of the number one Skull Classic Ford. Precision Products Racing once again. The team switched to Ford starting in 1993. His best start was second in the spring at Richmond. His best finish was fifth in the fall at Bristol. Overall, he scored one top five and five top tens. Ended the 1993 Cup Series season 21st in final points. In the Xfinity Series, Mast made six attempts, qualifying for five, ra qualifying for five races was once again behind the wheel of the number zero, Skull Classic Chevrolet. His best start was first in the spring at Richmond. His best finish was eighth, also in the spring at Richmond. Overall, in five starts, they scored one pole and three top tens. In 1994, Richard Jackson's Precision Products Racing Team and Rick Mast had, both had the best season that they would ever have. Rick Mast was once again behind the wheel of the number one Skull Classic Ford. Kevin Hamlin became his crew chief for the 1994 season. His best start was first in the summer at Indy. This was another incredibly important race, as it was the inaugural Brickyard 400. His best finish was second in the fall at Rockingham. Overall, they scored one pole, four top fives, and ten top tens, and route to an 18th place finish in final points. DNFs did plague them, though, ending 94 season with ten DNFs. Or, honestly, I think that 18th place points finish would have been more like around 8th mm, to 10th. Let's say if they only had ended up with maybe like two or three. Two to three or four, maybe DNFs. But anyways, then in the in the 1995 season, Mast was still with the number one Skull Ford team. His best start was first in the fall at Dover. His best finish was eighth twice in the spring at North Wilkesboro, then in the summer at Indy. Overall, they scored one pole, zero wins, zero top fives, and three top tens. Ending the 95 season 21st in final points. Honestly, really pretty, 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 honestly pretty disappointed. The Precision Products Racing Team returned in 1996 with a brand new sponsor, Hooters. So, Rick was behind the wheel of the number one Hooters Ford full-time in 96. His best start was second in the fall at Dover. His best finish was fourth in the fall at Martinsville. Overall, they scored one top five and five top tens on their way to finishing 18th in final points. Now in 97, Rick switched race teams for the first time in his NASCAR Cup Series career. He moved to the number 75 Remington Arms Ford owned by Butch Mock. His best start was fifth in the fall at Phoenix. They did miss, he, he, you know, he did miss Three races due to Dean Kuhn. His best finish was ninth in the fall at Talladega. Overall, he scored two top tens and finished 32nd in final points. For 1998, Rick Mast returned to the Butch Mock number 75 Remington Arms Ford. 
The team did DQ for three races near the end of the season once again. His best best start was first in the spring at Rockingham. His best finish was eighth in the summer at Sonoma. Overall, he scored one pole and one top ten, finishing thirty third in final points. Rick made his final career. Rick made his final career NASCAR Xfinity Series start in the fall at Michigan, driving for Jimmy Spencer in the number twelve Zippo Chevrolet, starting ninth and finishing tenth. At the conclusion of the season, Mast and Butch Mock parted ways. That following season, in 1999, Rick signed on to drive full-time for Kelly Yarbrough in his number 98 Universal Studios Ford. His best start was 5th in the summer at Pocono, and his best finish was ninth in the fall at Loudoun. Overall, he scored two top 10s and finished in 1999 32nd. Final points. <clears throat> As a new century dawned, the year 2000, Rick Mass left the Kelly Arbor Motorsports team to run the full schedule with Larry Hedrick in his number 41 Big Daddy's Barbecue Sauce Chevrolet. But the team only made it to the end of race 6 at Bristol until they realized they were not getting paid from their sponsor. So they were forced to stop racing. So Mast left the team to join the number 14, Conseco Pontiac, owned by A.J. Foyt. Now, the thing about, you know, not getting paid, the sponsor not paying them, that is exactly what happened. Um, Rick ended up just leaving, leaving the team and just going over to A.J. Foyt. Um, now, AQ four times, but his best start was second in the fall at Dover. His best finish was eighth in the summer at Pocono. Overall, he scored two top tens on his way to 33rd in final points. At the conclusion of the 2000 season, Mass left the Foyt Racing Team. Rick was all over the place in 2001 as he attempted the first 17 races for the number 50 Midwest Transit Chevrolet. Out of the first 19 races, he qualified for 8 of them. His best start was 11th in Martinsville. His best finish was 14th in the summer at Loudoun. Then Mast made the following 10 races, attempting them in the Ill River Racing number 27 Pontiac, qualifying for 6 races. His best, his best start was 32nd, Bristol. His best finish was 30th in the fall at Darlington. To finish out the season, he made six attempts for Junior Dunleavy's number 90 Duke Mayonnaise Ford. His best start was 27th, and his best finish was 25th, both coming to Phoenix in the fall. Now, a little known fact is that following the accident at Daytona in 2001, that took Dale Earnhardt from us. Rick Mast was the first driver the first driver well the first choice to drive the number 29 Chevrolet. Though Childress called Harvick to ask if he would be available if Mast was not. Harvick accepted so they just went ahead and went with Harvick and the rest is history. Mast would make his final nine starts in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2002. It turns out he had been developing an illness called carbon monoxide poisoning, and he was forced to retire. Even as if, even as of him being forced to retire, Mast was being offered the number 45 Petty Enterprises Dodge for the second half of the 2002 in the spring at Richmond, and his best. His best finish was 24th in the spring at Darlington. So, in 364 NASCAR Cup Series starts, he scored 4 poles and 36 top 10 finishes. And his best points finish was 18th twice in 1994 and 1996.
in the Xfinity Series, he scored 5 poles, 9 wins, and nine, 95 top 10 finishes. His best points finish was 7th, twice, in 1985 and 1989. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.